welcome back let's look at functions and c so before we move more into functions let's first understand this program this is a program which is going to compute the science max english and computer average of five students right so the science marks of five students are stored here the math marks of five, five students are stored here english and computer science marks so these are the marks of five students right now we want to calculate the average of science so that we understand how well the teacher is teaching so we will look at the average of all the students uh, in science all the students in math all the students in english and all the students in computer science so let's look at this program for i is equal to 0 less than 5 first we calculate the total of science marks and then we calculate the average right which is total divided by 5 and we print it as average for science the same logic is used for math the same logic is used for computer science and english as well now if you run the program so you look at it there are four averages printed but something doesn't look right right so the all the four numbers are kind of whole numbers 60.00 80.84.00 it doesn't seem to have a decimal um, 84.5 so there is a problem in this program right so let's try to fix it so here actually to make it a floating point division even though this is a floating point number it does an integer division right so because both 5 and total are integers it does an integer division so we need to make this change everywhere in this program right now if you run the program yes you get the average correct average calculated now if you look at it there are two problems here right so one is this is the same logic which is being used again and again for calculating science and max and the code gets repeated right these four things are getting repeated again and again second thing is when you have to make a change uh, in the logic you have to change it across all the places so these are the two major problems right so um, so for this actually functions are really useful to tackle these two problems that we looked at let's look at how functions help so functions help number one by breaking a larger program into smaller pieces called modules or subroutines or procedures or functions all these are the same right they manage complexity right we will see how to see it right so uh, it's much more easier to read with functions we'll see that reuse of code so instead of repeating the uh, calculation of average four times actually we can reuse the code right so someone could be developing the module for the function which calculates the average while someone else is developing the main program so it actually develops independent so people can work on different modules right so for example if you are developing an angry bird application one person can focus on the graphics one person on the physics aspect one person on the real game itself right so this allows the independent development of code so finally if you look at it you can fix the defect in one place now if you look at it in that program i had to fix the defect in four places changing that phi to phi dot zero right so you can fix it in one place so and it's much easier to handle the requirements so there are two types of functions in c right one is a library function one is a user defined function we have already used a lot of library functions like printf scanf gets puts uh, string length and so many other functions right those are library functions there are user defined functions as well which is what will be the focus of this chapter so let's look at user defined functions in greater detail now let's look at the same program written as functions so the overall logic right which was to create or calculate the average is written as a function this is called the return type basically what this function returns at the end of the day the name of the function and these are the arguments taken by the function right so marks is an array that we are going to take and the size of the array these are the two values that we are taking as arguments right and within this function the logic remains the same we are going to calculate the total and compute the average right so this logic remains the same and once this average is computed now we are going to return the average right so when it returns whoever is going to call this function is going to get this value again float which is the return type what this function returns 
right and the name of the function the argument list so here integer array is one argument and size is the other argument these are local variables which will be visible only to this particular function they cannot be accessed in main now you are doing a calculation of the total and you are computing the average here now how do you use this function so we have written a function how do you use this function right so if you look at this program average is equal to calculate average of sines comma phi so first we are trying to compute the sines marks so we are passing this array sines here is the sines so this is getting passed so the sines value of sines gets into this marks array all these are copied right and it does a calculation it returns back right and we are also sending what is the size of the array in this case five elements are there so we are sending five so this signs value of signs get into gets into marks it computes the average and then it returns the value which gets stored in this avg now this can even be a different name it need not be avg here you can or you can change it right so even if you change it to average it will work so it need not be the same name right so here it can be a different name so avg is there so here this value gets returned so i'll change it here as aver right so here average gets calculated and i'm returning the average right so i'm just trying to show you that it need not be the same if it is the same also it is not an error right so this average whatever gets computed gets returned to the main function it gets stored here right average is equal to calculate average of sines comma phi the same function can be used to store the max mark so all you have to change is change it to max right now if you look at it i have stored this value and printed we can even do it in a much simpler way uh, english averages and here instead of a variable name i can call this function so it calls the function it does the calculation it returns a value that gets printed similarly for computers as well right so this is a simple implementation of this function now when the computer reads from the top right the declaration or actual definition for the function is at the bottom of the file but before that we are calling right so the computer at this stage when it's compiling from the top it wouldn't recognize what is this calculate average right so it will throw an error so to avoid it we have to inform the computer this is called as a function prototype so we inform the computer saying that hey we are going to write a function called calculate average which will have a return type as float and it will take an integer array and an integer number so note the semicolon here right so this is called as a function prototype the only purpose of the function prototype is to tell the compiler that when it reads this line it will remember that okay there is someone who is going to write a function of this type right so and later you have this function when you have the actual definition of the function there is no semicolon here right you have the actual function here now let's run this program the same program that we wrote for um, this one so if you look at it it has calculated all the four marks and it has displayed here so this is how functions work right so let's look at the definitions some of the uh, things that we talked about here in a quick summary so the advantage that we have here is one the program is modular so calculate average is handled in only one place if at all we have to make a change we have to make a change only here to fix the problem we don't have to change in four places so one person can develop the main program while one person can develop this it is much more easier to read this program because we are very clear that it is calculating average no redundant code so the code is being reused so the same code is not repeated again and again so these are the biggest advantages of um, functions now this is called the prototype let's just recap the key terminologies this is called the prototype which is used to inform the compiler this is called parameter these are parameters being passed to the function these are called arguments because these receive the parameters in this case it copies the value from here to here so 5 is copied to size or size is assigned 5 right and this marks array will carry all the values from signs right and then it does the calculation here this is called the return value this is called the return type this is called the argument type right and this is the argument so argument name right so these are the arguments 
So this is the quick summary of functions. Now let's look at the flow of this using a using Python tutor. So let's use Python tutor to understand the flow of functions, right? So here we have two fun a function sum. So integer a comma b. So the two variables are initialized. This is the main program. Look at this. This is the main program. So now I am calling the function sum. If you look at it, sum has a separate stack. This is the program main program stack. Sum has a separate stack. So x and y are two variables. Now when this line is executed, a the value of a will be assigned to x, value of b will be assigned to y, right? So as you can see, value of a is copied to x and b is y. These are called parameters because these are called from here. And these are called the arguments, right? So now return x plus y. Note that you can do an expression here. So x plus y is computed. Value seven is calculated. It matches with the return type. So seven is passed. It comes here. It gets printed. So if you look at it, yes, seven is computed now. After this comes out of the function, that entire thing goes away, right? So now it prints the value of seven here. Now that this is how it works. So we talked about function prototype earlier. We said that the function prototype is to make sure that uh, to inform the compiler about the function, right? You can avoid the function prototype if you declare the function before it is used. For example, uh, you define the function before it's used. For example, calculate average is there. I have moved it from below main to above main here, right? So what has happened is this function has been moved here. So it can actually calculate the average here, right? So now when the compiler goes from the top, it knows what calculate average is, right? So you can avoid prototype if you can define it before being used. So in this case, there is another function called display. We replace the printf with display to actually demonstrate something. So display does not return anything. So we call it void. So here the display function is used to print what is a mark, right? So signs, if you pass the value signs and avg, so here I am receiving it in a character array. So science gets passed to subject and then the average gets passed. All it's doing is a simple printf, right? So here this function does not have any other purpose apart from printing this. So it does not return anything. Here if you see there is no return statement or even if you want a return statement, it will be an empty return, right? It will not return a value like this. So these are called void returns or the purpose of the function is just to display. It's not going to return anything. Now, if you run the program, here you see the same thing gets returned. Now, one thing, two things we learned here. One, there is no prototype because the function definition is done before it is being used. So, for both the functions, the same, right? For both these, we don't have a prototype. We have done the actual definition before they are used. Second is there is a return type called void. That means nothing will be returned. These are the two things that we learned in this exercise. So let's look at the same program. So we saw that the return type could be void. Even the argument list can be void. So we've written a program here, right? Which is like void delay void. So it does not take any argument. It does not have a return type, right? So this is just, I mean, we have just introduced here to delay something, right? So we are just going to delay, right? For one millisecond or something like that, right? Before, before printing something. Let me just run this. So if you see here, signs will get printed. There'll be a slight delay and then max, slight delay and then English, slight delay and then computers, right? So what has happened is, we're just asking the computers to do nothing here, right? So we are just doing nothing. We're just counting I value from one to, um, I mean, 900 lakh, right? So it's a huge number for which it is just waiting here in the for loop. So when you run this, it just has to run some empty cycles here because of which there is a delay introduced. So when you run the program, you will notice that after science, there is a slight delay, after max, slight delay, after English, slight delay, so after computers. So to do this delay, we don't have to really uh, have any arguments passed. If you do a void, that is sufficient. So here it's just to demonstrate that the argument list is empty and the return type is empty. How you call this is like this, right? So delay empty. So nothing is done here. So some more quick things to remember, right? While calling, right? The parameters can be expressions. For example, if you have an integer a, you can pass it as three into seven, right? It calculates 21 and then it passes. Similarly, nine to seven, 63 gets passed here. 
so expressions can be passed second is um, you can pass characters right so and you can return characters um, so that is also possible float or character or return it can be any other type other than int right so third is you can pass it during initialization for example a equal to sum sum gets called and here it returns 8 8 gets assigned to a it can be used within if statements if sum right there is open bracket close bracket equal to equal to 8 print if reached so this is also possible right? some good practices with functions provide a name that would clarify the objective of the function right for example calculate average rather than saying function name is abc right clearly it should clarify what the objective of that function is minimize the number of return statements within a function a function can have many return statements even in the middle of a program i mean function you can have a return but minimize it try to have only one return statement use names for parameters that are clearly identifying instead of passing a b and c pass it as signs marks max right so like that so it is pretty clear as to what you are passing it right so avoid too many nested calls as we saw a function can call another function which can call another function right but try to avoid functions calling each other it becomes very difficult to understand have comments before functions which explains the purpose of the function so someone else reading the function would clearly understand how to use this function let's look at storage classes in the next chapter